As next speaker now, Professor Helda R. Santos from uh, University of Helsinki, Finland. Multifunctional nanomedicines for targeted drug delivery and imaging for ischemic myocardial injury. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. I would like to start to thank also uh, the organizers to give the opportunity to present uh, our work on this topic and thank you all to, for being here this morning. So I'm going to tell you about this multifunction uh, nanomedicines that we are using in our lab. I'm not a cardiologist, I'm a chemical engineer, but I became interested on this topic and I'm going to give you a very simple example how we can apply our materials for MI. So as it was already discussed this morning, for those of you that were not here early morning, so cardiovascular disease is the number one disease uh, that kills more humans in the world. So you can see here, just in 2015, about 80 million, and it's predicted that in 2030, uh, will kill about 24 million. So we hope that with these new technologies, that number can come, come down. Um, and you can see here also the costs, the costs on, the, on this disease is, is huge. Uh, so we definitely have to do something. Um, so for those of you that also already heard, so there is a problem in the, in the heart. This is how it looks like a healthy heart. Um, patients usually get uh, problems in the heart with fat accumulation or other kind of, of problems. And then when uh, these uh, uh, veins start to get blocked, then uh, uh, there is a, a, a heart infection. Um, and one of the big problems is that there is a fibrosis scar formation, uh, and this is a known reverse uh, uh, issue. So could you, we somehow help to solve this problem or in other words could we help to reprogram these cells in order to become uh, uh, cardiomyocytes like cells so this was our our big question but as i said in the in the beginning as i said in the beginning there are many other uh, 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 treatments so the most used ones are are definitely the the typical drugs molecules uh, but there are new therapies emerging, cell therapy based small uh, molecules and also material based therapies like you heard in the, in the previous talk and that's what I'm going to, to talk about today. But my group is actually focused on different areas. So uh, we basically work, uh, the heart is just one of them, but we work also in tissue regeneration, cancer and so on. So we learn from cancer and we try to actually apply some of the knowledge of the targeting uh, of cancer uh, uh, cells in order that we could ap apply the same, uh, the same kind of, uh, uh, the same kind of uh, technology for, for the heart. Uh, so that's what we did and I will just present to you uh, one example. So, uh, my group is very interested also in developing new materials for different kind of applications. One of them is just here, lignin-based materials. So if you are interested, you can see the poster of my student on this topic as well. But uh, in this particular study, we use two kind of materials. One that is called porosilicon material and another one that is estelate dextran. So why we were interested in this, uh, very simple. Uh, these materials here have a high drug loading degree. We can tailor the properties. They have large surface molecule uh, area. They are biocompatible and biodegradable and they also have a, uh, we can functionalize them. In other words, we can also target them. Similarly, estelate dextran, it works the same way, high encapsulation efficiency, we can have a very high play payload of different molecules. We also can surface functionalize these materials. They are also biocompatible and biodegradable, and on top of that, on top of that they are also pH responsive. So we took advantage, advantage of this. First, we just actually inject directly uh, this material, uh, first the porous material directly in the heart of the, of the, of the animals, so the sh uh, some shaman um, animal models. And we looked into the functional parameters, the pro-fibrotic uh, uh, genes, pro-inflammatory genes, and also for the biodegradation of these materials in the heart tissue. And what we were very happy to see is that these materials were actually biocompatible. That's what it tells this. Um, so then we started to think, of course, it's a very hard approach to inject directly. It's, an, it's very invasive. So we start to think that we could actually modify these uh, this, uh, uh, this materials by diff using different peptides. 
So one of them was the ANP, but we also test some other peptides. The problem is that we don't have so much information what we can target in the, to the heart tissue at the moment yet. So we actually tested a lot of things, and we come up with, uh, uh, from the peptides that we tested, this one actually was the best one um, that gave better re response, and we actually propose a mechanism where we are actually targeting. But we are still studying and trying to develop further to see actually where the particles go. So we were very happy to see these first examples. And then we started to do also in uh, uh, isoprenaline an animal model where we inject these particles IV to see where actually they, they, go, they went. So we're very happy to see some of the accumulations so in, uh, into the heart tissue. Um, we actually also sectioned the, the heart to see exactly where they accumulate in the apical part, median part, and basolateral part. They were mainly actually on the uh, median and the, uh, apical part accumulation. We saw uh, some specificity towards the injured heart, um, and we also could identify that, in fact, the particles were accumulating in the, in the heart tissue. Um, so we use a lead compound from our pharmacologist, and this lead compound has uh, potential to actually uh, reprogram some of, some of, the, of, of the cells. Uh, the problem with this compound is extremely insoluble. So you can see the solubility here is practically zero. When we put it in our porosilicon material, you can see that we cre increase tremendously the solubility of the material. So we were very happy to, to see this. And of course, we inject this material, the, the, the particles with this drug into the, the animal models as well. And we look into some uh, uh, protein expression. So we study, for example, the PERC to see, and we saw uh, uh, um, um, a uh, uh, regulation effect here, which we were very happy to, to see. Uh, and we further investigated what's going on inside of the cells. So we tried to uh, see if there was a potential for the nanoparticles to induce some cardioprotection. Uh, and we explored this by using a different system. system. So now I changed to dextran modify nanoparticles. And in this case, we co-loaded two different drugs. So this one, these two drugs here, which have been demonstrated to be actually efficient uh, together with uh, other, uh, other small molecule drugs to actually induce direct reprogramming of fibroblasts into cardiomyocyte-like cells. So we wanted again to explore. They are actually poorly water soluble as well. So we wanted to see if we had a, a pH responsive. So we check at two different pHs here. So we can see that at higher pH, uh, uh, the release is very slow, but at, uh, at lower pH, we could see a much higher uh, release of these drugs. So again, we uh, look into uh, some of the properties. First, the dissolution of these materials to be sure that they actually are pH responsive. Uh, they were. Uh, and then we also look into, uh, this is in vitro, we also looked into the uh, expression of two proteins, in this case, uh, beta-catenin and SMAD3. So they are very important on, on the modulation of the cardiac fibroblast uh, uh, type. And what we realized was that uh, actually we could have an increase of the, the beta-catenin in, uh, in the cyt cytoplasm. And we also were able to inhibit uh, the SMAD3. So we prevent the translocation uh, to the nucleus. And this is actually a very good news because we, we think that with this we can somehow uh, reprogram or at least have an effect on the conversion of the cardiac to, to cardiomyocyte-like cells. But this is still a long way and we are exploring more and this is actually uh, what we did in vitro. So we are now uh, going more into the uh, into in vivo. So do we have or not a cardiac, cardiac reprogram, uh, reprogramming potential? Uh, and that's what we are answering for the next uh, uh, cleanup. So uh, uh, this, I just show you the videos. You it will take a while to load, maybe 10 seconds. That's what is left in front of me. So basically, you, what you probably should be seeing here is that if you look closely, these are actually primary uh, uh, cardiac cells. But if you look to the last formulation, if this would be at the same time, all the videos, which is not, you would see actually these this, uh, this cardiac cells actually beating a bit faster than all the others. So for us, this is uh, a good news, and we are now exploring this, this more uh, in the future. Oh, thank you very much for that. And uh, my last slide now is... Yeah, so you can see them here actually beating a bit, a bit stronger than the other. So the conclusions, so we used two different materials, one that is, it was inorganic particle and one that was uh, a dextran-based polymer particle. So they are, they are, uh, this one here is biocompatible specific to cardiac cell interaction. We can enhance and selective the uh, MI 
heart accumulation and we could also modulate the hypertrophic signals. Same with this one as well, so two different systems but uh, similar responses. Uh, and we could also uh, demonstrate that we can modulate the signal factors here. So we hope that uh, this is, uh, will translate also then in vivo. So uh, we think that we have a platform with great potential for cardio uh, protection and cardio regeneration therapy, but still a lot of studies need to be for the evaluated and if you are really interested also in the next step of these studies that I just show please visit also the poster of one of my students on the, this topic and I finalize by thanking to all my collaborators uh, special these two persons here my students Julia and Monica who did all the studies that I presented here uh, Professor Heike from uh, a, cardiolo a cardiologist from the pharmacology department in our faculty and all the funding but special the Tekes funding who, who give us a lot of money to investigate all this and to, to move a step forward on the nanomedicines for, for cardiovascular disease. Thank you for your attention. I'm happy to answer the questions. Thank you very much for this interesting presentation. We are strongly over time. We have time for one question, please. I just wonder how large these nanoparticles are and if you have studied the biodistribution after intravenous injection. Yes. So we did study the biodistribution of these particles, and these particles are about uh, between 200 and 250 nanometers. Short question. Can, can you? Do you know if the retention of the particles is in a specific cell type or just cardiac fibroblast? That's a very good question. We don't know yet if it's in the specific, uh, what, what kind of cells actually they are accumulated, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we move to the next presentation, also from Finland. Uh